a lot of fresh thinking today and uh, a lot of thought for going forward. Yeah, we brought together a, a, an eclectic mix, a good group of people today, some of whom are in sports, some of whom are in business. Um, and bringing them together actually creates the right environment where you do get that fresh thinking. Because if it's just sport talking to itself, we tend to go back to what we've tried before and what might have worked to a degree, but maybe is not ready for the step change. Whereas business coming into the mix and coming into the equation, it brings a different energy, not even a better one or a worse one, but just a different energy energy and so what we set out to achieve today was exactly that fresh thinking fresh initiatives and we come away with some ranging from quite big in terms of hosting uh, you know six nations matches at the Aviva Stadium back to back men's and women's one of the big themes was the fact that this isn't men's sport versus women's sport this is sport there's also um I suppose some opportunities missed it came up today about the Irish rugby women's team sponsorship but you know turning negatives into positives that was one theme that rang true today as well oh yeah that's what we want to do we we look at where we are today but we don't want to just spend the whole day shouting and giving out about the fact that it's not fair it's not this it's not that what we want to do is we want to try and take what we have today and turn it into something better tomorrow now we're not tilting at windmills we're not looking for the impossible all around the world from the uk to the us to australia to continental europe big companies are getting involved to a much bigger degree within women's sport you've got continental tires sponsoring the women's soccer league you've got bmw cadbury investec sponsoring the uk uh, the english hockey team women's team for for two million two million pounds Liberty Insurance and AIB have combined hurling and camogie here, both at all-Ireland level and at club level. And when you've got brands like that that are coming into what's effectively a greenfield site with women's sport, they are going to get rewards. This is not a project which is going to be around with the same level of opportunity for the next three to five years. In three to five years' time, the companies that get involved in women's sport now will be able to look back and think, yep. I did that and that was the right thing to do at the right time. It might not have been the obvious thing, but oftentimes in terms of marketing or in business, you have to look away from the obvious. You're looking for the thing which is going to be different and which is going to be successful. And women's sport is in exactly that space at the moment. One of the topics that came up today was the amount of media coverage, but it is really a 360 degree approach. It is because media coverage increasingly is being driven by what's happening in the real world in terms of social media. You know, you get stories that might never have had an opportunity of making it into mainstream media, which are now being picked up on social media. And if they're genuinely good stories, they will grow and they will prosper in social media over the course of an hour or a couple of hours. And then all of a sudden, they make it into the mainstream media. That feeds back into social media because mainstream and social, they're they're, they're coexisting alongside each other one drives the other and if we can have a greater control over the social media side do the right thing tell the good stories create personalities around women's sport better than has been created in the past then we've got a chance of actually putting those personalities and those stories into the mainstream media and allowing it all to feed back into a virtuous circle so this isn't about you know an opportunity that is impossible that is too far away in the distance it is possible to achieve it we just need energy we need a bit of imagination and we need a fair amount of hard work it's like preparing any for any sports event a lot of comparison made between what happens here and across the water in england and exposure for women's sport in england has been quite high some figures which impress and surprise a few people today yeah well we were looking at at figures dating back over a number of years and for every for every 10 people that watched the Ryder cup in 2010 in england eight people watched the british women's open golf eight out of ten you know that that factor is is very reasonable that was the Ryder cup compared to to the to the british open um in terms of soccer there was more people watched the the quarterfinal of the women's world cup when england were playing in it in 2009 than watched that year's carling cup there was more people who watched the UEFA Champions League final, the Women's Champions League final, than would have watched any of the events that were taking place in the Premier League in the, pre- in the previous week because it was more diverse. It was, it was spread, spread around a little bit. So, again, you know, women's sport is not the lesser relation of men's sport. It's different. 
but people enjoy it. People watch live sport. If you look at the amount of live sport we have now compared to what it was like 20 years ago, the difference is just exponential. It can't carry on going around just in the same small circles. It needs to expand out, and women's sport has got the opportunity to actually fill that gap. We should be seeing more women's sport on television. That feeds into more newspapers. That feeds into more online. That feeds into more sponsorship. That feeds into more TV. So again, it's creating the right environment in which things can grow and leverage off each other to make a better future. Another thing from today, the Sport for Daughters pledge, uh, something interesting and innovative, innovative and be interesting going forward to see how that will work as well. Yeah, it's what we like to do. It's what we like to sort of throw an idea in there and see who can actually pick it up and make it work well. Sport for Business can't do Sport for Daughters on its own to the same extent as it could do if we had other partners within the community getting together. So we're going to launch it on September the 1st. This is where we're going to build it between now and then. And on September the 1st, when the kids go back to school, it's going to be a simple pledge whereby people who have got a, a younger female relative, whether it be a daughter or a niece or a sister, that rather than just bringing them to go and see men's sport, rather than just bringing them to Croke Park to see the Dublin men's team or Parky Rin to see the, the, the Cork senior team, bring them along to a women's event. Bring them along whether it be in your own club or whether it be at national level or whether it be at, at a good club level. Just make a pledge online. Say, I want to do this. I want to give my daughter or my sister a role model in women's sports that she can identify with. I can bring my daughter to Croke Park and she would love watching Bernard Brogan and Paul Flynn and, and people like that sort of achieving sport at the high level. But she knows that she's never going to be able to play for the Dublin senior men's football team. I could bring her to see Sinead Goldrick and Cleaner O'Connor and she's a useful enough footballer. She might then see that as being a pathway for her and that might keep her playing for one year or two years. It might bring her onto the Dublin team, it might not. But the whole purpose of it is to keep the girls of today involved in sport tomorrow because it has so many benefits in social terms so many benefits in health terms and this is something simple which will actually put it on more of a pedestal put it closer to the front of people's minds that they need to actually work a little bit at actually gen gen you know, generating the right level of interest among their daughters or their sisters or their nieces in women's sport because when they go they'll be fired up they will enjoy it just as much as they would any other sporting event especially if they bring along their friends and it's just making that small commitment each one of us as individuals to just say yeah I'm going to do that this weekend and we'll bring together the sports with help them to advertise the events that people can go to and we'll just make it into something which can be much bigger than the sum of its parts. You must have been very pleased representatives from nearly every sporting organisation in the country there today and keenly listening to what was going on but also importantly playing a full part as well. Very much so. There's there's probably an argument that, that sport for business couldn't have existed five or six years ago when there was more money around and when people wanted to hold on to what they had as what they thought were good ideas. Now we're living in a much more collaborative environment and it was one of the arguments. Now we've only been out the door, we've been in existence for a little over 15 months and people said, well, it'll never fly. The sports, they won't really want to cooperate with it absolutely wrong the sports have been great they've come together you know we had the manager of the women's soccer team national we had the manager of the women's rugby team national we had the most capped player we had the most the player that has won the most all Ireland medals these are stars within sport and they gave their time freely in order to come today to help us to generate greater interest around their sport and more perhaps just as importantly as the sport there was the business interest that was there today we had Ulster Bank there we had AIB there we had PWC we had representatives representatives from businesses across the whole spectrum from small businesses like creative who make who make um, make trophies and, and 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 corporate gifts through to other small companies like sports inc who do temporary tattoos they were there as businesses that want to get involved in sport and want to stay involved and they're there sitting alongside the aibs and the pwcs and the accentures and the deloits and you know they've all got a shared passionate interest you know sport is the universal language and women's sport is a part of that language that really resonates with people as we stand at the moment so it's a great day we were very pleased with it